Sir Alan Akebourne CBEFRSA is a prolific British playwright and director. He has written and produced as of 2021 more than 80 full-length plays in Scarborough and London and was, between 1972 and 2009, the artistic director of the Stephen Joseph Theatre in Scarborough. Where all but four of his plays have received their first performance. More than 40 have subsequently been produced in the West End, at the Royal National Theatre or by the Royal Shakespeare Company since his first hit Relatively Speaking opened at the Duke of York's Theatre in 1969. Major successes include Absurd Person Singular, the Norman Conquest Trilogy, Bedroom Farce, Just Between Ourselves, A Chorus of Disapproval. Woman in Mind, A Small Family Business, Man of the Moment, House and Garden and Private Fears in Public Places. His plays have won numerous awards, including seven London Evening Standard Awards. They have been translated into over 35 languages and are performed on stage and television throughout the world. Ten of his plays have been staged on Broadway, attracting two Tony nominations, and one Tony Award. Aikborn was born in Hampstead, London. His mother Irene Worley was a writer of short stories who published under the name Mary James. His father, Horace Aikborn, was an orchestral violinist and was the lead violinist at the London Symphony Orchestra. His parents, who separated shortly after World War II, never married, and Aikborn's mother divorced her first husband to marry again in 1948. Aikborn wrote his first play at Wisborough Lodge when he was about 10. Whilst at prep school as a boarder, his mother wrote to tell him she was marrying Cecil Pye, a bank manager. When he went home for the holidays, his new family consisted of his mother, his stepfather and Christopher, his stepfather's son by an earlier marriage. This relationship too, reportedly ran into difficulties early on. Aikborn attended Haleybury and Imperial Service College, in the village of Hartford Heath, and whilst there toured Europe and America with the school's Shakespeare Company. After leaving school at 17, Aikborn's career took several temporary jobs in various places before starting a temporary job at the Scarborough Library Theatre, where he was introduced to the artistic director, Stephen Joseph. It is said that Joseph became both a mentor and father figure for Aikborn until his untimely death in 1967, and Aikborn has consistently spoken highly of him. Aikborn's career was briefly interrupted when he was called for national service. He was swiftly discharged, officially on medical grounds, but it is suggested that a doctor who noticed his reluctance to join the armed forces deliberately failed the medical as a favor. Although Aikborn continued to move where his career took him, he settled in Scarborough, eventually buying Long Westgate House, the house formerly owned by Stephen Joseph. In 1957, Aikborn married Christine Rowland, another member of the Library Theatre Company and indeed Aikborn's first two plays were written jointly with her under the pseudonym of Roland Allen. They had two sons, Stephen and Philip. However, the marriage had difficulties which eventually led to their separation in 1971. Aikborn said that his relationship with Roland became easy once they agreed their marriage was over. Around this time, he started to share a home with Heather Stoney, an actress he had first met ten years earlier. Like his mother, neither he nor Roland sought a divorce for the next 30 years and it was only in 1997 that they formally divorced, Aikborn married Stoney. One side effect of the timing is that, as Aikborn was awarded a knighthood a few months before the divorce, both his first and second wife were entitled to take the title of Lady Aikborn. In February 2006, he suffered a stroke in Scarborough, and stated, I hope to be back on my feet, or should I say my left leg, as soon as possible, but I know it is going to take some time. In the meantime I am in excellent hands. And so is the Stephen Joseph Theatre. He left the hospital after eight weeks and returned to directing after six months, but the following year he announced he would step down as artistic director of the Stephen Joseph Theatre. Aikborn, however, continues to write and direct his own work at the theatre. Since Aikborn's play started becoming established in the West End, interviewers have raised the question of whether his work is autobiographical. There is no clear answer to this question. There has only been one biography, written by Paul Allen, and this primarily covers his career in the theater. Aikborn has frequently said he sees aspects of himself in all his characters. For example, in Bedroom Farce, he admitted to being, in some respects, all four of the men in the play. It has been suggested that, after Aikborn himself, the person who is used the most in his plays is his mother, particularly as Susan in Woman in Mind. What is less clear is how much influence events in Aikborn's life have had on his writing. It is true that the theme of marriages in various difficulties was heavily present throughout his plays in the early 70s, around the time his own marriage was coming to an end. However, by this time, 
He had also witnessed the failures of his parents' relationships as well as those of some of his friends. Which relationships, if any, he drew on for his plays, is unclear. In Paul Allen's biography, Acorn is briefly compared to David and Guy in a chorus of disapproval. Both characters feel themselves in trouble, and there was speculation that Acorn himself may have felt himself to be in trouble. At the time, he had reportedly become seriously involved with another actress, which threatened his relationship with Stoney. But again, it is unclear whether this had any effect on the writing, and Paul Allen's view is that it is not current experience that Acorn uses for his plays. It could be that Acorn had written plays with himself and his own issues in mind, but as Acorn is portrayed as a guarded and private man, it is hard to imagine him exposing his own life in his plays to any great degree. In the biography, Paul Allen wrote, regarding a suggestion in Cosmopolitan that his plays were becoming autobiographical, if we take that to mean that his plays tell his own life story. He still hasn't started. On leaving school his theatrical career began immediately, with an introduction to Sir Donald Wolfett by his French master. Acorn joined Wolfett on tour to the Edinburgh Festival Fringe as an acting assistant stage manager for three weeks. With his first role on the professional stage being various parts in The Strong Are Lonely by Fritz Hoschwalder. In the following year, Acorn appeared in six other plays at the Connaught Theatre, Worthing, and the Thorndike Theatre, Leatherhead. In 1957, Acorn was employed by the director Stephen Joseph at the Library Theatre, Scarborough, the predecessor to the modern Stephen Joseph Theatre. His role, again, was initially as acting stage manager. This employment led to Acorn's first professional script commission, in 1958. When he complained about the quality of a script he was performing, Joseph challenged him to write a better one. The result was The Square Cat, written under the pseudonym Roland Allen and first performed in 1959. In this play, Acorn himself played the character Jerry Wattis. After 34 appearances in plays at the Library Theatre, including four of his own, in 1962 Acorn moved to Stoke-on-Trent to help set up the Victoria Theatre, where he appeared in a further 18 plays. His final appearance in one of his own plays was as the Crimson Gollywog in the disastrous children's play Christmas v Mastermind. He left the Stoke Company in 1964, officially to commit his time to the London production of Mr. Whatnot, but reportedly because was having trouble working with the artistic director, Peter Cheeseman. By now, his career as a writer was coming to fruition, and his acting career was sidelined. His final role on stage was as Jerry and Two for the Seesaw by William Gibson, at the Civic Theatre in Rotherham. He was left stranded on stage because Heather Stoney was unable to reappear because the props had been left unpacked, and this led him to decide acting was more trouble than it was worth. The assistant stage manager on the production, Bill Kenwright, would become one of the UK's most successful producers. Acorn's earliest plays were written and produced at a time when the Scarborough Library Theatre, like most regional theatres, regularly commissioned work from their own actors to keep costs down. His first play, The Square Cat, was sufficiently popular locally to secure further commissions although not this or the following three plays had much impact beyond Scarborough. But, after his transfer to Victoria Theatre in Stoke-on-Trent, there came Christmas v Mastermind, which flopped and is now universally regarded as Acorn's greatest disaster. His fortunes began to revive in 1963 with Mr. Whatnot, again premiering at the Victoria Theatre. This was the first play that Acorn was sufficiently happy with to allow performances today, and the first play to receive a West End performance. However, the West End production flopped, in part down to misguided casting. After this, Acorn experimented by collaborating with comedians, first writing a monologue for Tommy Cooper, and later with Ronnie Barker, who played Lord Slingsby Craddock in the London production of Mr. Whatnot in 1964, for the scripts of Pharrell W.T.'s Hark at Barker. Acorn used the pseudonym Peter Caulfield because he was under exclusive contract to the BBC at the time. Then, in 1965, back at the Scarborough Library Theatre, Meet My Father was produced, later retitled Relatively Speaking. This time, the play was a massive success, both in Scarborough and the West End, earning Alan Acorn a congratulatory telegram from Noel Coward. This was not quite the end of Acorn's hit-and-miss record, because his following play, The Sparrow only ran for three weeks at Scarborough. However, the following play, How the Other Half Loves, secured his runaway success as a playwright. The height of Acorn's commercial success included Absurd Person Singular, The Norman Conquest Trilogy, Bedroom Farce and Just Between Ourselves, all plays that focused heavily on marriage in the British middle classes. 
The only failure during this period was a 1975 musical with Andrew Lloyd Webber, Jeeves, and even this did little to Dan Aikborn's career. From the 1980s, Aikborn began to move away from the recurring themes of marriage and explore other contemporary themes, one example being Woman in Mind, a play performed entirely from the perspective of a woman going through a nervous breakdown. He also experimented with several more unconventional ways of writing plays, such as Intimate Exchanges, which has one beginning and 16 possible endings, and House and Garden, where two plays take place simultaneously of two different stages. As well as diversifying into children's theatre. With a resume of over 70 plays, of which more than 40 have played at the National Theatre or in the West End, Alan Aikborn is one of England's most successful living playwrights. Despite his success, honours and awards, Alan Aikborn remains a relatively anonymous figure dedicated to regional theatre. Throughout his writing career, all but four of his plays were premiered at the Stephen Joseph Theatre in Scarborough in its three different locations. Aikborn received the CBE in 1987 and was knighted in the 1997 New Year Honours. It is frequently claimed that Alan Aikborn is the most performed living English playwright, and the second most performed of all time after Shakespeare. Although Aikborn's plays no longer dominate the theatrical scene on the scale of his earlier works, he continues to write, his most recent major success being Private Fears in Public Places that had a hugely successful off-Broadway run at 59E59 Theatres. And in 2006 was made into a film core, directed by Alain René. After suffering a stroke, there was uncertainty as to whether he could continue to write, the Aikborn play premiered immediately after the stroke. If I Were You, was written before his illness, but his first play written afterwards, Life and Beth, was premiered in the summer of 2008. Aikborn continues to write for the Stephen Joseph Theatre on invitation of his successor as artistic director, Chris Monks, with the first new play under this arrangement, My Wonderful Day, performed in October 2009. His play Roundelay opened in September 2014. The order in which each of the five acts is played in each performance is to be left to chance. With members of the audience being invited to extract five colored ping pong balls from a bag beforehand. Many of Aikborn's plays have had their New York premiere at 59E59 theaters as part of their annual Brits Off Broadway festival, including Private Fears in Public Places, Intimate Exchanges, My Wonderful Day, and Neighborhood Watch, among others. Although Aikborn is best known as a writer, it is said that he only spends 10% of his time writing plays. Most of the rest of his time is spent directing. Aikborn began directing at the Scarborough Library Theatre in 1961, with a production of Gaslight by Patrick Hamilton. He directed five other plays that year and the following year in Scarborough, and after transferring to the Victoria Theatre, directed a further six plays in 1963. Between 1964 and 1967 he only directed one play but in 1968 he resumed regularly directing plays, mostly at Scarborough. At this time he also worked as a radio drama producer for the BBC, based in Leeds. At first, his directing career was separate from his writing career. It was not until 1963 that Aikborn directed a play of his own, 1967 that Aikborn directed a premiere of his own. The London premieres remained in the hands of other directors for longer, with the first play of his both written and directed by him in London waiting until 1977. After the death of Stephen Joseph in 1967, the position of Director of Productions was appointed on an annual basis. Aikborn was offered this position in 1969 and 1970, succeeding Rodney Wood, but he handed the position over to Caroline Smith in 1971. He became Director of Productions again in 1972, and this time, on 12th of November that same year, he was made the permanent artistic director of the theatre. In mid-1986, Aikborn accepted an invitation to work as a visiting director for two years at the National Theatre in London, form his own company, and perform a play in each of the three auditoria provided at least one was a new play of his own. Using a stock company that included performers such as Michael Gambon, Polly Adams, and Simon Cadell. The three plays became four, and were, Tons of Money by Will Evans and Valentine, with adaptations by Aikborn, Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge. His own A Small Family Business and John Ford's Tis Pity She's a Whore. During this time, Aikborn shared his role of artistic director of the Stephen Joseph Theatre with Robin Herford and returned in 1987 to direct the premiere of Henceforward. He announced in 1999 that he would step back from directing the work of other playwrights, to concentrate on his own plays, the last one being Rob. Shearman's Knights in Plastic Armor in 1999 
the exception being in 2002 when he directed the world premiere of Tim Firth's The Safari Party. In 2002, following a dispute over the Duchess Theatre's handling of damsels in distress, Acorn sharply criticized both this and the West End's treatment of theatre in general, in particular their casting of celebrities. Although he did not explicitly say he would boycott the West End, he did not return to direct in the West End again until 2009 with a revival. Of Woman in Mind. After Akeborn suffered a stroke in February 2006, he returned to work in September and premiered his 70th play If I Were You at the Stephen Joseph Theatre the following month. He announced in June 2007 that he would retire as artistic director of the Stephen Joseph Theatre after the 2008 season. His successor, Chris Monks, took over at the start of the 2009-2010 season, but Akeborn remained to direct premieres and revivals of his work at the theatre, beginning with How the Other Half Loves in June 2009. In March 2010 he directed an in-the-round revival of his play Taking Steps at the Orange Tree Theatre, winning Universal Press acclaim. In July 2014, Akeborn directed a musical adaptation of The Boy Who Fell Into a Book, with musical adaptation and lyrics by Paul James and music by Eric Angus and Kathy Shostak. The show ran in the Stephen Joseph Theatre and received critical acclaim. Akeborn also sits on the Council of the Society of Authors. There are eight one-act plays written by Alan Akeborn. Five of them were written for Confusions, first performed in 1974. The other three one-act plays were, please adapted as films include. Thanks for watching.